Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 10 US aircraft carrier, the Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We're playing a match on the map Shatter and it is a tier 8-ish to tier 10 battle. I've made a video about the FDR before and in that I said that I really enjoyed playing her because there's new stuff to figure out. The FDR plays differently from all the other CVs. And since then, I have learned a few things when playing the ship. And one of them is that you can do strikes in a way that you can't really do on other CVs, at least not nearly as well. Namely, you can start a strike, have the cone narrow, and then start turning for the attack. And the planes do maneuver a lot better than I expected, and the cone of attack does not really increase much. And you can do this with both the level bombers and the torpedo bombers. And I tend to start out with the torpedo bombers exactly because of this. And I think the enemies really don't know that this is possible because they don't expect it. I have never really seen anybody properly react to these, or at least react to them in a way where you can avoid them. For example, right now we're dropping that Pomman. I start my attack run while pointing to the side of the Pomman, and now that my cone has narrowed, I'm going to turn and then do my drop on the Pomman. And you can see the planes maneuvered really well. Now we lead a little bit and uh, then we just continue. Now we need to make sure we avoid the flag because we can't do a strike immediately. And we landed seven of those torps and got two floodings. The floodings are kind of lucky though. Usually you don't get nearly as many. Now we wait another five seconds. We turn the planes around and do another strike on the Pomman in the same way, where we attack on the side and then turn afterwards. Like right now, so we narrow the cone. And now we start turning to go and land the torpedoes on the Pomman. And I think this is insanely strong. In fact, it, I find that the planes being able to maneuver the way they do is so strong that I will upgrade my opinion of the FDR from maybe OP and strong to maybe OP to definitely OP for random battles for sure. Because against unsuspecting players, this is insanely powerful. In fact, I don't even know what you can really expect a random player to do to avoid this. It just seems like the battleships are pretty much guaranteed to take lots of damage here. In fact, here I should have done the same thing again, but I just kind of... Because I only have two planes, I just want to go in a straight line here and drop them from far away and maybe land some hits, it's fine, even if we don't. Follow up with the uh, level bombers for Ichi to go finish off that uh, Pomman right now. And it's been three minutes, we're at 63k damage already. Well, 66k damage already. She has Damacon, the uh, flooding, but this, this means that once my level bombers arrive, they should be able to set a fire that does not have an answer. Overall, the match is looking pretty decent so far. Uh, we're both locking the sea cap and none of the other cap zones have been taken. Now, obviously, the FDR does have the downside that she has incredible amounts of trouble dealing with destroyers. She not only has to worry about destroyers uh, and their flak from DDs like Haaland, but she also can't really damage them. Somebody else has to spot the destroyer for the CV to be able to start the strike, or the DD has to have the anti their entire turned on. Otherwise, it's very... And even then, it's actually very, very difficult to land proper drops on them. Oh, there's the Pumman. Okay, she's, she's gonna turn in. This is what you should do. However, with the level bombers, you can do the same thing. You can turn afterwards. Now, these don't turn nearly sharply enough to be able to make this a perfect drop, but we can still make it happen a little bit. Now, aiming this is actually quite hard because you have to aim with your uh, uh, WAST buttons, or A and D, and the mouse. And it's a bit fiddly. The mouse doesn't turn quite fast enough and the uh, A and D keys turn very, very quickly. But as you can see, this is very effective against ships that simply don't know how to react to this. And again, I'm not quite sure how you should react to this. I guess you'll have to start the turn early and you have to be in a full turn once the uh, drop is coming in. But even then, perhaps the CV can just outmaneuver you. Anyway, this should finish off the Pomman right here. Goodbye. Okay. Ooh, 
an FTG. Excellent, let's go for her then. It's been five minutes, we've done 86k damage. Why not? But it is going to slow down because the enemy is obviously going to run out of the easy targets. I mean, that Pommen was virtually alone. Sure, there were ships around, but they were far enough that the entire overlap wasn't really there. And the CV, the enemy CV that is, didn't really help either. I mean, the middle way could have easily dropped a fighter on the, this Pommen multiple times now, and that would have certainly made the dropping much more difficult, but she just didn't, so... Hey, that made it easy for us. I pulled back here because, obviously, uh, the uh, I probably won't be able to strike again because I'm in the entire of the midway and the Talon, and obviously the FDG as well, so it's easier to just pull back and go in again. Because when you do lose these planes, they do take a while to actually get them back. And that's actually why Holland is quite scary against the CV. Because you might just suddenly end up eating a few flak bubbles and have half or most of your squadron struck down. And if that happens a few times, you are out of those planes. It'll take quite a while for those to regenerate. And that means you'll have to use torpedo bombers. Also, with my re-evaluation of the ship, um, I actually like the rocket planes the least now. Before I liked them the most, but now, no. I definitely like the level bombers more for the turning, and the torpedo bombers are also excellent. I will say, though, that I do think Midway... Uh, dive bombers are easier to use than these level bombers and I think on average you'll have more more effectiveness of them but obviously they don't have the survivability against anti-air which is why I think the FDR's uh, level bombers do shine because you can strike into a heavy AA I mean right now I'm in the anti-air of the lightning and the FDG and potentially what well, was the Talon oh you're trying to turn huh not on my watch. Well, that's a nice 13k damage and the fire. That was actually 7 bomb hits. That's almost all of them. Thinking of what to follow up with. And what to strike. Hmm. Now, striking the FTG would probably be a good idea. However, I have to worry about two things here. One, there's a lightning in this B-cap. Two... The FTG might be very close to the midway, and if this lightning actually goes through this cap, she can threaten my actual ship. So I tried to do a strike on the lightning, but unfortunately uh, she didn't go forward as I expected, which meant that my strike was wasted. I mean, I didn't lose any planes or anything, but I just wasted a, a whole bunch of time. Okay, but this does mean that the lightning doesn't threaten my ship. And since I'm already here, I might as well go and strike that Vladivostok that is alone. By the way, we're at 144k damage at 8 minutes into the match. Why not? And we're gonna get a whole bunch more in a bit. I am getting lucky though that this midway truly is not engaging me. Like, she isn't dropping fighters on the targets I'm hitting, and that helps quite a lot. If the midway dropped fighters on the targets I've hit already, I can't go do a follow-up to set them on fire, right? Ooh, nice. Oh, and she's gonna eat torps too. That does mean we're probably not gonna get a fire though. Because she's damage cunning. But that is goodbye to this Vladivostok. And I guess we'll do a follow up on the rune over there. Because she is as well alone. I would really like to drop the Petra Pavlovsk and or the Tepets or, FD or Bismarck. Is that actually a Tepets? I don't know. There's some kind of... Oh, Ohio. Sorry. I misread. Um, but I don't think I can go through that entire it is the entire of three ba or two battleships and a cruiser and those soviet cruisers have incredible aa come on uh, that's not looking too good yeah that did very little but we'll go for round number two then i mean it feels like we should be winning really hard i'm at 160k damage at 10 minutes into the match, yet both teams are even. I can't believe that this is happening. I have no idea what my team is doing here, but... Oh well, I guess uh, things sometimes do go this way. I mean, we don't even have a caps advantage. Kind of unbelievable. Oh, Ruin isn't dodging this time. This looks good. This looks really good. 
Oof, 15k and a fire. I guess I'll go do a follow-up on the rune then, because there aren't that many better targets at the moment. I am slightly worried that there's uh, an enemy rogue Haland on the ACAP. We don't know where she is. And I mean, Arishalia is pushing alone, so she's probably going to be bait for that uh, Haland. I do move my ship away as well, because uh, the fighting is going to be over the middle part, and I think it makes sense to try to be safer. Gonna use my engine boost uh, consumable here. Just make it run out and then use it so that I can go strike that rune again as quickly as possible. Because uh, if you notice, um, I only have uh, seven of these planes left and my reserves are zeroed out on the level bombers. So I, I think it's likely I'm not going to be able to get a better opportunity to use a boost in this match. Since I don't think we're ever going to have a full squadron of these again. That FTG is still low, but I'm not really in a good, very good position to try to finish her off. I could try, obviously, but I think it might cost more than it's worth. The rune's dodging a little bit. Looks okay. Mm, only one hit again. And the fire. Perhaps level bombers on cruisers like the rune, especially when they're paying attention, aren't the greatest choice. But I mean, I can do a follow-up, and if we get the fire here, that will be a permafire. Okay, the enemy Holland has entered the ACAP and has torpedoed our Georgia. Not good, because we are behind now. It's, uh, what is this, seven ships against nine? Not a very good drop, I think. Could have been better. But I got lucky. Wow, three hits from that. Damn. Okay, let's try use some torpedo bombers. Again, I need to move my ship away. Because Haaland might be pushing from behind. I mean, it's a Haaland versus a Thundra. I would like to help, but there's nothing I can do. I would just be throwing planes away. And the planes I would like to throw away the most are what? Rocket planes. But I can't use rocket planes against the Haaland. Level bombers and torpedo bombers have a chance of actually dealing damage to them. But the... Uh, Rocket planes? Not really. It's very hard to deal damage with rocket planes against destroyers. And uh, wow, Holland actually detonated the Thundra. Damn. That's unlucky. Okay, it's a 5 versus 9 now. This is not good. We're dropping on the rune. Let's have the uh, drop circle or drop cone converge, then turn. And I bet Rune doesn't expect this, because she is clearly not taking any evasive actions yet. Okay, and... hmm. Do I do another... no, Rune's gone. Goodbye. Hmm. I think I should go and drop on the Petra Pavlovs, go through the middle of the B-camp, and then uh, do the same kind of turn to hit the Petra Pavlovsk. I kind of like the uh, that these kinds of torpedo bombers exist because they are interesting in that they can make an enemy move. Because if you're uh, bow on towards a CV that normally is going to strike you, it's very difficult to use torpedo bombers against them. It doesn't matter if they're MVR or whatever torpedoes. However, with this, they can obviously go to your side and drop on you. And the only way to avoid this is to accelerate forward and turn into them. Like that Petra, if he wants to avoid my torps right now, he should be accelerating forward and turning in. But obviously she isn't going to do that because she has probably never seen a CV do something like this. Ah, th this wasn't a very good drop. I could have lined it up slightly better. Started to turn a bit earlier. But I mean, this is a bit of a learning experience for me as well. But I mean, look... He took five torps there, and that didn't even sink her there. Okay, I think I actually might have to move my CV away. Yeah, because uh, Bismarck and the Holland are pushing over there. Oh, I think I might be able to land the Hindenburg here. Oh yeah, that would be excellent if we could land the Hindenburg. But goddamn, they have so many low HP ships. Somebody on my team, please fire have to drop blind here, because the Hindenburg might render too late for that. And maybe the Torps won't arm then. 
Okay, three on the hidden bug. Good enough, I guess. But somebody, please, finish ships off. It's a four against seven. But, oh, six now. Excellent. I mean, they still have 50% more ships, but it's not nearly as bad anymore. I'm gonna go and finish off the Petra Pavlovsk. But honestly, I would like to drop the uh, Bismarck over there, because the Bismarck is engaging me. And I have to angle against both the Bismarck FTG and the Petra Pavlovsk, and even potentially the Halan. This would actually be an excellent time for the enemy CV to strike me as well. But I don't think we're going to see that, because that CV doesn't seem to really engage with me much. No. What with her never dropping fighters for the team, like right here would be an excellent place to drop fighters all the time. Anyway, goodbye, Petra Pavlovsk. And now we're gonna goodbye the uh, FTG as well. Still healthy, 37k HP, so I'm good. But there is an Ohio pushing up through the middle, and unfortunately she has a very much high HP pool left. And I don't think I can dissuade her from attacking me. Holland is torping me, but it's okay, it's Holland torpedoes, they don't do much. I only scratch paint. Goodbye, FTG. Okay, I guess we'll go after the Bismarck now. Because we kind of have to. Unfortunately, we are heading towards the Holland. It's a 4 versus 4 now, so things aren't quite as bad, but the enemy obviously still controls two of the capstones. And our CV, me, is being attacked. And I am down to 16k HP. I don't think I can survive this. And three minutes is way too long. I should have started moving a whole minute earlier or so. I mean, Cossack might be able to save me, but it'll come at a cost. The Cossack will have to YOLO into the Haland and... I don't know, the Hindenburg has to help her and they have to somehow delete the... Uh, the Haland there. Otherwise, this isn't gonna work out. Also, our Smolensk is actually going forward. Maybe the Smolensk can actually take out the enemy midway. So it would be even... Oh, Haland's firing. That's not good news usually. But we did manage to take out the Bismarck's half HP that she had. And we should be able to finish her off with the strike. Come on, I can survive this, please. I can survive it. Come on, just a little bit. 4k HP left. If I could drop this and launch another... Ah, oh, damn. Ohio finished me off. That's unfortunate. I was hoping I could drop this uh, Bismarck and then launch another squadron. Because that... that that way I could have had a full squadron in the air and then utilized the three minutes left to its full extent, but unfortunately, no. Okay, come on, this will finish the Bismarck, at least. But now, Haaland, I'm gonna just try it. No, I have to turn away, I forgot. Ten seconds before I can actually start to drop. In fact, do I actually even get away? It's a Haaland. Oh boy. Okay, I have one plane left. You know what? I'm gonna just try to drop. I'm gonna pay close attention to my HP pull on the planes. 1863. I'm even gonna drop from far away once the HP pull gets low. 1700? 1600? 15? Oh, and it's already gone. Wow. Damn, that, that went a lot faster than I expected. Oh, and the Cossack has smoked. This is bad news. Cossack, you need to chase the Holland. You must chase the Holland right now. That's our only chance, because if that Holland gets away, we lose the game. I mean, there's only one minute to go. Our Smolensk might be able to take out the midway. But even if that happens, that's enough. That's not enough to win. We need at least one other ship. So unfortunately, it'll come down to whether this Cossack can catch up to the Holland. If the Cossack hadn't smoked, I don't know how it would have gone then. But we would have had a chance of sinking the Holland, and if our ships had survived, it would have been fine. Yeah, it looks like Smolensk is going to be able to take out the Midway. Goodbye, Midway. Rough game, huh? A rough game. But you're at least going to win, probably. Compliment to Smolensk. Well done, Smolensk. And now 10 seconds, and unfortunately the Holland gets away. But if we had sunk the Holland, I think we would have we would have had enough points, but I don't know if the point swing is enough. Actually, maybe it still wouldn't have been enough. Would have been a lot closer. 
quite unfortunate that we lost a game where I was this dominant. Can't believe that we lost a match like this. And I mean, we started out super dominant. We basically took out an entire battleship in the first 3 to 4 minutes of the game from the enemy team. 282k damage, a Kraken, Confederate, Witherer, High Caliber, virtually everything you would want. Wow, that Cossack was number one, but I suspect it's because she was tier 8 in a tier 10 battle. I mean, you can't really expect a Cossack to take out the Halant, but she did have the backup of the Hindenburg. So maybe I should have expected that. Here's the damage it took. Wow, only 12k from the Halland. You know, 5k from the guns and 7k from the tarps. 13k from Petra, 10k from only 10k from Ohio. But 31k from the best mark. Damn, it was the best mark after all that did the majority of the damage. Unfortunate. But 1.2 million potential. I did tank a little bit. But look at my damage though. Jesus, 282k damage. Maybe if I had finished off that FTG, it would have been different, but I don't know. Look, compare me to that midway, right? I think I contributed slightly more than he did, but sadly we still lost. Very unfortunate. I don't know what our Shima was doing, 173 base XP? That means he must have been AFK for a while at least. Here's why I think the level bombers are slightly better. Yes, they didn't do quite the same alpha as the torpedo bombers. But obviously fire damage adds up to more than flooding damage. And so because of that, I think level bombers have a slight advantage over torpedo bombers. And I didn't use rockets at all, because I don't think rockets are quite as good. Probably should have, at least when it came to fighting that rune. But, oh well, I mean, hindsight is 2020, isn't it? So, let's go over the commander skills and upgrades. I use a slightly different CV build. So first air supremacy, then improved engines, then aircraft armor, no survivability expert, side stabilization, then um, I guess it doesn't matter in what order, concealment expert, torpedo acceleration, adrenaline rush, and then uh, improved engine boost. Sure, I don't have the survivability expert, but FDR planes don't really need the extra HP. But Torpedo Acceleration makes using the Torpedo Bombers, in my opinion, easier. And uh, um, Adrenaline Rush is nice because your planes do take a lot of damage, which means you can actually take advantage of the uh, speed buffs. On other CVs, I recommend the standard CV build. Upgrades-wise, uh, speed obviously, then the replacements. Then I use Bomber HP, because again, I think I, they're slightly better than the Torp Bombers. Otherwise, I could use the Torpedo Bomber HP. Here I use actually the Torpedo Bomber attack time. Bet you haven't seen anyone actually use this upgrade before. Well, now I do, because this allows me to turn and maneuver for longer with the Torpedo Bombers. Then Aircraft Engine Modification 1 and then Air Groups Modification 1. So overall, I actually think the FDR is better now than I did initially. And I think she is really, really powerful. For random battles, I think FDR is just amazing. She is definitely incredibly powerful. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patron on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.